A lot of people ask me about solar pumps and is it possible to filter a pond on solar? The answer is yes, it's possible to filter a pond on solar, but there are a few things you'll need to consider. So in this video I'd like to talk about what those things are, the limitations of solar and how you can overcome them. If you don't know me, my name is Kev and the aim of my channel is to help people build and maintain a pond without spending a fortune. If that sounds like something that interests you, you might like to subscribe and check out my website ozponds.com. So there's a number of reasons why solar appeals to lots of people. It's seen as free energy, eco-friendly, and can be used in locations where main power isn't viable. So firstly, you have to remember it's certainly not free. You'll need to pay a much higher upfront cost to set up a solar system. Even if you buy a pump and panel kit, it will cost substantially more than a comparable pump that connects to mains power. And then if you need to add batteries, it's going to get substantially more expensive. On my website, I have links to low volt energy efficient pumps. I think this is almost always a more cost effective solution, certainly in backyard ponds where mains power is generally accessible. The beauty of low volt pumps is that they can be extended to reach the pond in most size backyards. For example, on this pond I extended the cable 25 metres. That's about 80 feet for my US friends. Most backyards are going to have access to power within that distance. So my point is that in this situation it's much more cost effective to use a low volt energy efficient pump than to run your ponds on solar. But if you can't get a mains connected pump to the pond, or your pond system is small, then you can absolutely consider solar. If solar is the only option, you'll need to decide on the type of pond. It's generally recommended that in a pond with fish, you want to keep the pumps running 24-7. There's a number of reasons why this is the case. Fish produce waste and the pumps help circulate water through a filter of some type. The main objective of any pond filter is to grow good bacteria that help break down fish waste and other organic materials and to capture and remove the waste and nutrients from the water. The more water that's passed through the filter, or the larger the filter, the more the water is purified. Then there's the oxygen. The moving water helps to mix air and water, which adds oxygen to the water, H2O. The bacteria, the fish, the little animals that are helping break down waste, they all consume oxygen. So basically the more fish you want to keep, or the bigger the fish, the more filtration and water movement you're going to need. But with all that said, it is also possible to create a pond that needs no pump or direct water movement. A pond with no or very few fish and lots of plants can be quite self-sustaining. If you want to see how something like this is built, I'll leave a link in the description. So your first step is deciding what sort of pond you'd like. If it's a pond with lots of fish, lots of open water, and you want crystal clear water, then you'll need plenty of water movement and pumps or aerators to create that movement. If it's a pond with hardly any fish, lots of plants, and you don't require open crystal clear water, well then you can get away with no water movement or very little water movement. And you can combine these two methods, so you have lots of plants, some water movement, supplied by a solar pump or an aerator, and some open water. There's heaps of ways that water can be filtered, but a pond with lots of water movement and good filtration will generally be much easier to manage and tick more people's expectations. I have a small solar pond and stream system that only runs 8 to 12 hours a day, depending on the time of year. That's with a battery connected. The water stays pretty clear, it only has shrimp and tadpoles, but it provides a nice sound and it's nice to look at. If you want to see how that was constructed, I'll link the playlist in the description. It also has a DIY filter and is constructed in a way that I don't lose water when the pump stops and starts. On this system I purchased everything separately, but if you want a plug and play solution, something like this Pond Max kit is ideal. The pump produces 3,500 litres of flow, which will allow you to create something comparable to this pond. The panels are quite large, and there's two of them. The system's incredibly easy to set up. You put the pump in the water, plug in the panels, put them in the sun, and off you go. Something like this system's going to cost you around $500 to buy. 
a comparable low bolt pump is going to be around 150. Of course on the cheaper option you still need to pay for the power. I give you the comparison so you can make your own informed decision. Remember the solar pump is only going to keep pumping when the panels are absorbing sun. The flow rate diminishes significantly when the panels are shaded on cloudy days. Anyway, I'll put a link to the solar kit and the low volt pumps in the description below so you can check them out. And you can create a system with batteries where the solar pump can run 24-7. Of course, this will significantly increase the additional outlay and eventually the batteries will need to be replaced. For me personally, and I run a lot of ponds, the cost of setting up a solar only pond is far more expensive than a pond running on mains power. I do have a large solar system on my roof and eventually I would like to get a large battery or hopefully a biodirectional charging EV that will make me self-sufficient on power. So if you do need to go totally off grid with your pond, determine what type of pond you want, determine if the filters need to run 24 seven, figure out the flow rate required to run those filters and then decide on what pumps you're gonna use. Not all pumps are created equal and some are far more efficient than others. You might also like to explore the power of using air to move water. But basically you'll need to know exactly how much energy the pumps or aerators are going to be consuming. Once you have that information, you can get help to size a system appropriate to your needs. You want to use someone local as they'll know how much sun you can reasonably expect over the seasons in your location. So over on ozponds.com, I've put together a bunch of resources and links to products that can help you design and build your own filtration system. Filtering water is easy, and that's where I think the average person can save the most money on a pond. Anyway, I hope this ramble was helpful. If you have any questions, put them down below. And if it was helpful, feel free to tickle the thumbs up button. Thanks for watching. See ya.